What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Beauty and the Beast, where Beauty and the Beast hang out and talk about popular culture. Today is episode seven of HBO's The Last of Us. Yes, we sat through this movie, I mean, this show, and we enjoyed it uh, to a degree because um, it wasn't exactly what we were hoping for. And uh, we got a lot to say about it, but we're, we're going to try to say that pretty quickly today. Uh, How would you feel about this episode? Uh, it's where uh, Ellie is waiting uh, for Riley to come back. And finally, Riley comes back, reveals what's going on in her life. And then they go off and uh, have the best night of their life. How do you feel yeah. about it? Uh, this episode, I mean, it was true to the DLC, the game, you know, pretty true to it. I just feel like it wasn't really necessary for the show. And it... I don't think it had enough entertainment in it. Uh, I don't think it was really entertaining at all. You know, I, I got the DLC when it first came out, before it came out with the remastered uh, edition. And uh, because I was a fan of the game, I wanted to see what Neil Druckmann was going to do. But uh, after playing through that DLC, I've never went back to it. It wasn't necessary to the story. It didn't add anything to it. There wasn't any great set pieces. It just told this tale that Neil Druckmann felt was very, very important to tell. And uh, to have a show like, uh, you know, HBO's The Last of Us, where you, you've got such a huge fan base, millions of people watching each, each episode, when people sit back at the end of this and they realize how much time is dedicated to one particular topic or genre, it could be quite infuriating because seven episodes that you're watching on a, a TV show, at seven hours. And if they dedicate two hours of that to a topic that you didn't that's not what you were looking for. If you take a, a seven hour uh, cooking course and then you get to hour three and then the next two hours are about, uh, you know, how to fix a car and you're just sitting there in class like, what is happening? This is not what I came for. I came for The Last of Us. I came for action. Uh, I came for Infected. I came for, you know, cool characters. And that's one of my critiques of it. I feel like uh, they, they really want to be extremely woke here and do nothing different. Do nothing different, you know, besides more woke nonsense. This is almost a beat for beat, extremely drawn out version of the DLC. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it lasted way longer than it should have. I mean, they could have added some other stuff in there with it and shortened that part of it. But it's like, uh, you know, our oldest daughter, Nova, she didn't play the DLC. She never played it or anything. And she was like, this episode is really boring. Like she was over it. Yeah, I felt the same way. Um, you know, the nostalgia factor will hit you like if you played through it before you see them, you know, put on the mask. That happens in the DL in, in the DLC. Um, them taking pictures in the photo booth, that happened in the DLC. But the DLC also had action. The DLC had them escaping infected multiple times. Okay. There was, yeah, there was it wasn't infected the, just one. It wasn't the notebook and then at the very end you see one zombie. That's basically what this was. It was a drawn-out love story that went one direction, just like episode three. And, you know, as a as a married couple with four children, um, that can be a little disconcerting when you have small children that you're raising in a traditional value way. And so to have, kind of have that kind of stuff constantly being shoved down your throat, it's a little... How do you feel about that? Out of seven episodes, two hours of it were dedicated to one particular thing. Like drawing these parts out are not important to the show it does not further the show in any way it doesn't enhance it so it's like it's just so pointless when they could have done so much more with more infected you know them actually escaping the infected they were just in one little area killed the infected with a shiv and that's it that's yeah. all that happened it was super lame it was much better in the dlc yeah because the dlc actually had some action they made you want to feel invested, made you feel like surviving. Yeah. You know, they did change one aspect of this where the uh, there was one infected that had been down there for a long time and it kind of used its new uh, fungus ability to call yeah. one single infected that caused all this trouble for them. Um, and, and, of course, that was a slight change. But the rest of the hour was this really uncomfortable teen, teen angst, you know, relationship that was brewing. And, and I was just like... I don't need to see this. And then, of course, the conspiracy theorist in me is like, all right, so episode three was about Bill and uh, Frank. This episode is about Ellie and uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Riley. Riley. How come we didn't get an episode about, you know, um, uh, Joel and Tess? And Tess. You know, that's that's one I would like to see. Well, at least if they had something like that, because Joel's a very invested. He's a main character of the game for over half of the game. 
We got a backstory to Ellie already with Riley. Why delve deep into Bill's story when you could have went and Joel and Tessa's story and given that to the people because people act that's the character we, we want to know about the most. That's the character that was a strong masculine type that we that men really like. But instead of giving people a story like that where we could see, you know, uh, the main character you're playing as his story with Tess, you know it existed, they go and do so I feel like it's an agenda. That's what I feel. I feel like it's an agenda because there's an obvious it's all going in one direction. It's all going in one direction. So it's never let an accident happens on a more conservative or traditional side. It's always going that way with Neil Druckmann. And I just feel like it's an agenda for these people. I mean, I love The Last of Us. It should be obvious. I love the game. I love it for what it was. But I see it inside of a vacuum because everything that I feel like they're doing outside of it doesn't stand for what I love the game for. And so if I have like my own beliefs, my own foundational beliefs, I can't. You know, get, just give those up for a damn video game or a story that some guy wants to push. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And also, it's like they didn't do the Joel and Tess story, but it would have been more interesting because at least Joel survived. Mm-hmm. Bill ended up dying. He They wasted that whole episode on his story, and he ended up dying before he could even help Joel and Ellie. It's like it was pointless. It was so pointless. And this Riley and... and um, Ellie's story is so pointless. It was dragged on. I just, I don't feel like it added to the, to the story at all. Well, hopefully we see some, at least see some infected. I don't know if this is, this is not the last, uh, you know, episode of the season. I don't think so. I, I, I think there's at least eight. It might be nine. I can't remember. But um, hopefully they end on a more powerful note. Yeah. You know, because I think this whole first season is the whole first game. Which means in the next episode, they, they might be going to the end of the game and all that crap might happen in the very next episode. Yeah. Um, that, that'll be kind of stupid. Yeah, well... Because we got... there was there's two big sets mm-hmm. that kind of happened before that, you know? Yeah, but that's so the video, like, that's the video to, game. So if they're trying to cram all that in, though, they, they wasted all this stuff on nonsense, useless things instead of interesting, <laughs> awesome parts of the game. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's uh, it's kind of crazy when you think about it that way, because if there's only one more episode, that's going to be the end of the, the very first game, and that's not when Joel comes and saves Ellie. Oh no, you're right, you're right. That part, that's what I'm waiting oh. for. Well, I think that's happening. That's getting ready to happen now, actually. But then they're not going to do the very end piece of the game where he's. I, you know what? Her? There might be more than eight episodes it might be I ten so. because you know once you get to that part you're really close to the end of the game so yeah, and so don't I'll... be spoiling it for people who ain't, who ain't never played the game I didn't say anything I just said rescue okay alright well I think that's my thoughts who hasn't played the game though a lot of people a lot of people haven't played that game uh, I talk to, to gamers all the time and they're like I never is that good I'm like have you lost your mind you know I talk to guys at work yeah I got an Xbox I'm like wet socks what is wrong with these people um but yeah for the people who haven't seen it played the game experience that i would say experience that before you experience this is crap this show because the game was was really really deep and powerful this one is they're just trying to go deep in different directions you know what i'm saying <laughs> and that's our cue <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight. Please leave a thumbs up to show support for the Beastly Gamer channel. Beauty and the Beast will be with you guys again next week on the Beastly Gamer. And I'm Kate. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.